modeling is one of the best ways to represent infectious disease outbreaks and Virginia Bioinformatics Institute is on the cutting edge of that technology. We're basically using data so we can model biological systems all the way from cells to people to even cities and countries. DDN has enabled us to capture, store, and share the simulations that we do. So a lot of times there are potentially millions of simulations that have to be done to really produce a result. In 2005, we were able to simulate the city of Chicago, which is 9 million people, in an hour. Today, using Epicendemics, we were able to simulate the entire population of the United States, simulating the spread of influenza in six seconds. This completely changes the types of questions that government decision makers can ask. We have to have the computational power dedicated for this sort of research. And so we have approximately 3,000 cores available. We almost have a petabyte of storage for them to use as well. We're using GPFS file system writing on top of a data direct network storage system. The key thing there is to have good throughput and also good IOPS. The DDN grid scaler really helps our, and enables our researchers to get the jobs done, and especially when we look at time critical delivery of results. Decision makers can't wait for the outbreak to be over in order to make their decisions. With the Ebola outbreak, there's such a, a feeling of urgency and importance. We received a call on Friday that the Department of Defense wanted some insight into where they should place hospital units. We were able to do simulations to optimize the amount of time that any individual would have to travel in order to reach a hospital unit. The data storage and the technology component is really critical to being able to provide that level of detail in the simulations. With Ebola, each sick person on average infects two other people. And over time, that's exponential growth. So a single infected person infects two people and then four people and so on. That information had to be transmitted back to the DOD by Monday morning because a plane was about to leave with the supplies to actually build these units. Having DDN storage ready to go was critical to being able to do the science in a timely manner. The reason we went with DDN was we got the capacity and performance that we needed at the price that we wanted. It came in with 300 terabytes, and since then we've grown it up to just over a petabyte of storage. And we have plans to continue to grow that in the near future. The scalability of data storage capacity is a very important consideration for us. So our data is increasing in multiple dimensions. We're seeing about 100% data growth year over year. With the scalability of DDN storage solutions, we're able to add new data sources as needs evolve. On our current system, we get about uh, two gigabytes a second data transfer rate, and also very fast IOPS. The reliability of the system has been very high. Um, we've never lost data. With DDN, we've been able to achieve very scalable, high-performance uh, file system and storage that's really enabled us to meet our researchers' needs, especially when you're looking at big data.